there are two different aspects to how to leave a narcissist. One of them is how to actually leave and the other is how to want to leave. I think the first battle is, is to actually want to leave. A lot of um, victims of narcissistic abuse who stay with the abuser in relationships are thought to be really weak by other people, but in reality they're not weak at all. The, the people who have experienced years of abuse are often very strong. They've managed to withstand so much and they're still standing. So it's not that they're weak, the issue is what they actually want. It's the same with any addiction. You know, if what you want is one part of this, this uh, thing, this, it could be a substance or a person that you're addicted to, then you're not going to leave because you keep wanting that part of them. You know, so with a, with a narcissist, that part is the part where they uh, validate you. If you keep needing that and wanting it, then you're going to stay with them. If you come to the realisation that the very thing that you're addicted to doesn't exist because the narcissist is creating an illusion and they're not validating you, they're just going through the motions of it. You know, once you realise that, you start to see that you can get that elsewhere. It's not only going to come from somebody who can fake it. And the best way to find it is inside yourself. But when you're coming out of a, an abusive relationship, you're not going to be finding it in yourself because you're going to be feeling really bad about yourself because someone's been abusing you over and over again. So the first thing you need to do is to want to leave. You need to find that desire in yourself to leave. And one of the ways of doing that is to end the confusion. You can't get, you can't end the confusion via the narcissist. They're not going to do that. They want you to be confused. So they're going to keep blowing hot and cold. They want to keep you uncertain and that, because that makes you vulnerable. So the only way to, to stop being so confused is to start to pay attention to your own feelings and to just get out of their world. They have a world that's full of illusions and as long as you're in their world, you're gonna be confused. Once you start to come back to yourself and to listen to your own feelings, you're going to start to leave their world and all of those illusions behind and just focus on your own feelings. But to do that, you need to be able to, um, you need to be able to be interested in how you're feeling and also to be able to value how you're feeling so that whatever, um, whatever the narcissist says or does is, is, you know, that you perceive that as a separate subject to how you're feeling. Because if it's the same, if, if you look at it all together at once, then you get very swayed by, how, by what they're saying and how they um, appear to feel. And, um, and it can confuse you. But once you are interested in how you feel, you'll get to the point of thinking that it doesn't really matter how they do or don't feel, or whether it's real or fake, because what matters is how you feel. One way of doing that is to think about the things that they've done that have upset you. When I work with people, usually one of the first things I'll ask them is about what the narcissistic person has done that's upset them. And what ends up happening is they, they go through one thing after the other, after the other, and there comes a point where they start to get quite passionate about what they're saying, and they start to feel angry as they're talking, you know, as they're remembering all these different things. And it's at that point, when they're in touch with their anger, that they have clarity. Because that kind of anger is a righteous anger which means that it's, it's an anger that you feel as a result of experiences that have happened to you um, from this person that you feel angry with. It's not the same as narcissistic rage. That's completely different because that's misdirected anger. That's um, anger they've been feeling since childhood towards 
um, their caregiver, you know, maybe their mother or their father or both of them, and they then project it onto everybody. Um, but righteous anger is different because you're, you're um, feeling it towards somebody who's essentially earned it. And so when you feel righteous anger, you, you don't feel confused because you're in your own world. You're thinking about your own feelings and you're taking them seriously. And so when you think about all the things that this person's done, you don't feel confused, you just feel angry. And, and so what I recommend is doing that um, as often as you can. Just it, It's not pleasant to feel angry, but if you say to yourself, okay, I'm gonna feel angry for two minutes, I'm just gonna let myself, you know, for two minutes, I'm gonna focus on the negative things this person has done. If you can keep doing that, it's gonna really help you to have clarity. Sometimes it can be just too hard to face um, the devaluation phase and to bring it on by leaving, you know, leaving and knowing that that means there's going to be loads of disapproval again can just be too hard to do. Even if there's no fear for your safety or anything like that, it's still something that you've developed a really strong reaction to, to getting that negative reaction from the narcissist. You can do it in steps so that it's not such a big move straight away, you know, you can, um, you can make sure that the abusive person doesn't know that it's over yet until you're ready for that. You know, so you could say that you're staying with relatives or you could go for a holiday. Once you know that you want to leave a narcissist, the next stage is how do you actually go about doing it? You know, you might have concerns for your safety. Are they someone who's going to stalk you? Is it going to make them really angry when, when you leave? Are they going to come looking for you? All of this kind of thing. The most dangerous time in a relationship with a narcissist is when you leave them. It's important to plan the time you're going to leave carefully. And, um, and I recommend leaving, if you're, if you're living with someone who's a narcissist and who's abusive towards you, even if they're only emotionally abusive and they've never been physically abusive, I recommend leaving when they don't know you're leaving. So that by the time they know what's gone on, you're not there and you're somewhere safe. You, you might want to change your phone number and you might want to take all sorts of other safety precautions that I really recommend you get further advice on. I recommend typing women's refuge and then your area into Google because very often they can be a great support. You know, they often have free information about how to keep yourself safe.